One of our most anticipated survival games from the last couple of years has released on PC for Steam and Epic Games into early access. So, being huge survival game fans, it was a no-brainer when Inflexion Games asked to sponsor us for a video to check out Nightingale and see what it's all about. We know many of you on the channel are into survival games like we are, and since we've covered this game several times over the last couple years before, we're going to give you the rundown on this new release. And if you want to try it for yourself, there will be a link down below for you. We've been intrigued about Nightingale since its release all the way back in 2021. It has a really cool mixture of creepy monsters, but also really pleasant looking landscapes in a gas lamp fantasy aesthetic. There's crazy monsters of all varieties, trees coming to life, an interesting base building system, a literal giant jumping through someone's base, and of course the portals, which take you to new realms and you have influence over how those realms are created. Over the last years of following the game, I've seen the developers do plenty of beta tests and consistent developer updates, including videos that went into detail over how the tests went, what features were being added in or changed based on player feedback. The dev team at Inflexion Games are a Canada-based studio formed back in 2018 by a group of industry veterans, but since then have expanded to over a hundred developers with a range of different backgrounds including AAA games like Mass Effect, Dragon Age, Wipeout, and Far Cry. So from seeing how they've listened and taken on players' feedback throughout the many beta tests, I think it's safe to say that these are passionate developers who seem to be in touch with their community, and this is a very valuable trait for a new survival game launching into early access. If you haven't been following this game, you're probably wondering what exactly is Nightingale and what sets it apart. Well, it's an open world survival game with a twist, giving it a bit more depth and discovery than other survival games we played recently. A great thing about this one is that you can play both solo like I have or online with co-op up to six players. And with the game's building and recruitment system, we can really see the co-op being a bunch of fun. The interesting thing is that when playing co-op, if you select the same respite realm, you can actually play regardless of your other party members being online, meaning you can do a sort of asynchronous play without a hosting platform, which is such a breath of fresh air, making co-op just so much easier and user-friendly. Within the game, you'll be gathering, crafting, building, fighting, and surviving as you journey from realm to realm, uncovering the mysteries of the realms, the portal network, and the Fae. Within the world of Nightingale, humans Humans and Fae used to live together in harmony. The Fae actually taught the humans how to use magic, which led to the creation of a fantastic city and the magical portals, which are gateways into other realms. However, a calamity struck called the Pale, which caused humanity to be stranded across these realms away from their sanctuary city, and now they're desperately traversing the web of portals in order to try and get back home. This is where we come in as a realm walker. We'll embark on a journey going from realm to realm as we gather and build to get stronger and stronger, as we encounter different biomes, enemies, and resources via the realm portals that you actually have impact over, thanks to the game's realm card system that leans into the game's endless replayability as it procedurally generates new realms with realm cards. Think of these portals as a way to create a new procedurally generated world with realm cards that will shape what that world is. This is like your way to customize a new world seed as you jump from realm to realm. Because these realm cards influence the realm in different ways, you'll be changing the different biomes and enemy types you encounter to gather different things you need. You can craft realm cards and there's a bunch of different varieties of cards, such as ones that increase the number of enemies, remove nighttime, force certain biomes, and much more. So as you're playing, you can choose if you want to go to a nice peaceful realm next and build a base, or go to a more dark and difficult realm with creepy eldritch creatures. To start off, you'll be gathering up resources to craft your first set of tools, and soon enough, you'll make your own starter base with workbenches, areas to cook, and refine items. After getting set up, you can then start producing higher gear score items that let you harvest better materials as well as deal more damage and take less damage. We've seen in the trailer that later on in the game, you can really get creative with the game's base building system, and there's even environmental impact on things like crafting stations, and your realm cards can even create better realms for crafting or building in. I've really enjoyed the pace of the game as you go about learning the different systems, exploring, and figuring things out. There's puzzles out in the world that once you figure figure out what you're meant to be doing, they offer you schematics to build new things in your base, and you'll even bump into traders from time to time. The graphics and settings so far have been pretty nice, with some areas leaving me just panning around to look at how nice it is, which really helps with that feeling of wanting to explore to see what's in the next realm. 
It also feels like the progression is there and tangible as you start with very primitive tools and even a very basic crossbow style launcher, but later on you'll be getting proper weapons and guns, which will definitely help with some of those really scary looking enemies and bigger bosses. So far, I can say as a survival lover, this is ticking a lot of boxes for me. Gathering and crafting up is what you would expect and feels good, and the realms that you go through are quite varied and different, giving you that sort of fresh feeling every time you jump to a new realm. So if you're looking for a survival game that does things differently with its own unique systems and mechanics, The Nightingale definitely sets itself apart from other games, especially in the early access space where others often fall short. With everything we've seen about the developers at Inflexion Games, we love how transparent they seem to be with their community through continuous updates, feedback implementations, and more, which is a massive bonus for an early access title where you need that continued support. So if all of this sounds good to you, you can check out Nightingale on PC with the link down below. So tell us down below, what do you think of Nightingale so far? Subscribe for more and we'll see you next time.